Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is ATI's X800 XT Platinum Graphics Card. It was released in 2004 and cost a massive $500 or pounds to buy. Hard to believe considering we paid £6 or $7.50 for it today. Now this is the AGP version and it was later released along with others as a PCI Express variant, though they seem to be impossible to find. This was also the first in ATI's lineup to be given the Platinum name, a hint at the extra power and performance that this thing was packing. Today we're going to be taking a look at this DirectX 9 beast and benchmarking a few old games to see what made this thing so desirable. Now this card has had some tough competition in the 6800 Ultra from Nvidia as well as its own successor the X850 XT both of which it managed to beat on most occasions thanks to its better suited architecture. So this card features 256 megabytes of GDDR3 memory, a 520 megahertz core clock, a 256 bit memory interface and requires a single Molex connector to power it, requiring a 300 to 350 watt power supply, not much considering Nvidia's card needed a 450 watt one. Around the GPU you'll notice a VGA, video out and DVI connector as well as this small but cool looking heatsink fan system that actually runs quite loud. As expected you won't be able to play modern titles with it but I thought a look back at this card would be interesting nonetheless. We had to fish out an old AGP motherboard for this one so we used an ASRock 4 core dual with a Q6600 CPU and 2GB of DDR2 RAM as well as Windows 7. So let's get into some games. The original Far Cry first with 1920x1080 as used throughout and absolute maximum settings to see 80 frames per second on average. If you're looking for an old school beast then it seems we're off to a good start and a system like this may be worth considering for nostalgic purposes alone. This game also still looks pretty good today considering its age and runs with no hiccups or slowdowns on this system. This thing is 13 years old and the fact it's still going strong despite an annoying amount of time spent finding the drivers is quite cool. So let's move on to the very popular Half-Life 2, a game that I would recommend everyone tries out as it will run well on most systems. Even here with everything maxed out once again we're seeing 68 frames per second Despite Half-Life 2 being a somewhat demanding older game compared to the others of the year, it has no difficulties here and I'm quite impressed by the overall performance. Moving on to Doom 3 which was actually optimised to run way better on Nvidia cards and we're still seeing very respectable results even with high quality. Doom 3 was a revolutionary title at the time thanks to its advanced graphics and it returned about 62 frames per second here. Anti-aliasing is also all the way up and it has been throughout so far. Finally we gave GTA 4 a try just to see if this card could handle it. GTA 4 of course is a DX9 game and it's probably one of the most unoptimised too. Unfortunately we had to turn things way down here even to 800 by 600 resolution and the game's lowest settings to get about 26 FPS. So GTA 4 is out of the question. Well, there we have it, a look at one of 2004's best GPUs. From $500 to just under a tenner really isn't bad going though, and if you're looking to build an older system that will cost you no more than a week's grocery shopping, the X800 XT Platinum may be just right for you. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you've really enjoyed it. Um, it took me quite a while to get the drivers and this system set up for this card, but I only ordered it yesterday, so the fact that it came in the post today was quite impressive. Um, so yeah, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.